Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. This time we're going to make our first program. Alright guys, so like I said we're going to be making our first program, which is basically what we did last episode except we're not going to use a template this time and I'm going to explain, you know, basically uh, each component of the program, right? So obviously if we're going to be making a program we need to open up Visual Studio, so make sure you open it and uh, I'll give it a second to load. Oh, it's already done, okay, so there we go. So now we can go ahead and create a new project here and let's select empty project instead of console app or any of these options, just select empty project so that we can have an empty project, right? Because <laughs> we're going to make it ourselves this time, right? We're making our first project or program really. So we're going to give it a name, we'll call it episode 2 I would recommend you call it whatever you want because, um, I mean, it doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it episode two if you want to, but that's what I'm going to call mine, obviously, like I just said two seconds ago. But yeah, so I'm going to change the file location. So C++ projects. So basically what it's going to do if I select, if I do select folder, meaning that it's going to set this as my file location, what that is going to do is um, whenever it makes the project, whenever I create, you know, the project is going to put a project folder of episode 2 inside of the projects folder to store all of the the program files basically I hope that makes sense but that's what it's gonna do it's gonna you know use that as a directory to store all our you know project files and all that fun stuff okay so anyway I uh, let's click create and now it's gonna create it for us by the way this album right here death race for love by juice world is really good so I recommend you check it out I'm a juice world fanatic but anyway so now it's opening up here it's creating everything as you can see down here and on the right side, you can see that we have this thing called a solution explorer. And that's basically just your file structure, okay? It shows you all the different files you have inside of your project. So as you can see here, we have external dependencies, header files, resource files, and source files. So currently, the source files folder is going to be the most important one because that's where we put our basic program files, right? And nothing is going to show up here this time because we haven't gotten a like a template already set up for us. We have to create everything ourselves, so nothing is open here, all right? So let's go ahead and create our first uh, program, okay? So we're going to put everything in source files, like I said. So this is a folder. So we're going to right-click here and do Add, New Item. So it's going to create a new file for us. And right here, we can choose what kind of file that we want to use. And it's already selected, but we're going to select C++ file. So that's a .cpp file. So that's just a basic C++ file that we can use. So we can add it if we want to, but we can also give it a name here. And uh, we can call it whatever you want. You can just call it source if you want to, but I can call it, um, you can call it whatever you want. I don't, I'm not gonna change it because I don't feel like it. I'm too lazy, but if you wanna change it, you can go ahead and change it. So click add, and now it's gonna add it to that folder for you. And so now we have our first program file. So now we can begin coding, right? So the first thing we want to do is have oh, on the first line is something like this hashtag or hash whatever you want to call it pound sign include and then space and then after that you want IO stream you know surrounded by these angle brackets whatever they're called so include IO stream and what this is going to do basically is include the IO stream file which is a separate file within you know C++ in our file that we're about to make here okay so don't worry about too much what this means yet we're going to be learning much more about this in the future but it's basically going to take another file and then include it inside this file basically okay so that's what that's going to do and it's going to allow us to do some special stuff like output other stuff because IO actually stands for input and output so it's going to allow us to output stuff for the console to the console like we did last episode we said hello world out into the console, if you remember that. But after that, on our next line of code, we're gonna have something called using namespace std. And don't worry, std does not stand for sexually transmitted disease, it stands for standard, uh, standard, okay? And basically that's just gonna make it so that your C++ program is gonna be using, or this file at least, is gonna be using the standard namespace um, within C++. So you don't have to worry about what that means quite yet, but that's what it's gonna use. It's gonna make it so that you can automatically use the standard li uh, library uh, namespace or whatever, okay? So don't worry about that yet. It's just some basic stuff that you want to have basically whenever you create a, um, a new program. So now after that, we're going to have some real code here, okay? This is code, obviously. I mean, it's code, but we're going to have some real code now, okay? So what we're going to do is create now our main function. And the main function is very important because every single program that you make in C++ has to have at least one main function in some file somewhere because for your program to run what it does is the compiler which is the thing that runs your programs it's going to look through your folder and find the main function no matter where it is it's going to it's going to try and find it and that's where it runs the program okay it's going to find that main function and run the main function which is going to run everything else within your program so really the only thing that you need to remember is that the main function has to be included in every program you need one main function in every program okay 
So let's go ahead and create it instead of talking, right? So we're going to do int main, and then it's going to have a opening and a closing parentheses right here. And that's basically what holds parameters, but we'll be learning about that later. And then now make a curly bracket here, and it's automatically going to generate a closing curly bracket, okay? So now once your, your, thing, your cursor is inside of those two curly brackets, then you want to open it up and put some space in between. doesn't matter how much space you put in between, but make some space. And then inside of here, it's going to um, allow you to put all of your code, okay? Because like I said, um, your program looks for the main function to be able to run everything else within your program. If I say method instead of function, um, they're pretty much the same thing in terms of you know what they are, but method function, same thing for me at least, because in Java they're called methods, methods instead of functions. But anyway, um, yeah, inside of here we're gonna start putting our code. So what we're gonna do here is output a message to the console like we did last time, and we're gonna do that with the see out message. So see out, well, we can call it command if you want to, it's not a command, but C out. So now we need to pass a basically a message to C out because the C out stands for the um, output stream. Okay, it's an output stream that we can use to output messages to the output stream, which is going to be the console in this case. Okay, so we need to give it a message to output, right? So we're going to use this thing here. It's called the put out sign. It's an operator. We'll be learning about this later. Do not worry. I know a lot of this is really new because you, well, I mean, at least if you haven't done this before, it's probably really new. So don't worry about it, what it exactly means yet, but that's the put to operator. And it's going to basically going to mean, which means that you're going to put this message here, hello world, inside of the C out um, thingy here, the output stream. Okay, this is output stream, right? So it's going to take this message and then put it inside of the output stream, meaning that it's going to send it into the console basically, right? And then on the end of it, you want a semicolon, right? Like you have here. This one doesn't need a semicolon because it's special, but you know, I don't really know why, but you don't really need one for that. But basically what you need to know is that every um, statement within C++, basically almost every statement has to end with a semicolon so that the program knows that's the end of the statement, all right? So that's the end of the statement. So we can go to the new line if we want to, to add a second line of code. But that's all we want for now, okay? So we're gonna go down here to the end of the main uh, main function and add something called a return statement. So return, and we're just gonna put the, the number zero, okay? So I'll explain what this means in a second, but first let's try running the program to make sure it works. So click the play button, and now it's gonna try running the program for us. Okay, and this console pops up and it says, hello world, and then it says, uh, blah 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 Ex exited with code 0 which is what we put here that's code 0 so it returns that to our system basically and now we can close it by pressing any key so that's pretty cool right we made a um, message output to the console again right but this time we made it ourselves so just to recap what we did is we made this main function here which is you know a thing that every program has to have because the compiler, the C++ compiler, looks for the main function to run your program. It has to be there. And then inside of that is where you have all of the code for your program, basically, okay? So we have the C out message, which is going to be representing the output stream. And then we're putting this message here, this um, hello world string. It's called a string, you know, which is a, um, a bunch of characters. We're going to put the string, or this, you know, sentence into the output stream. So we're going to pass it to the output stream so that it goes to the console, basically, okay? And then after that, once the program is done running, after we ran you know, all of our code and stuff like that, at the very end, we have something called a return statement. And it's going to return zero. And what that means is that your program ran successfully, okay? So basically, you, again, you don't really have to worry about this either, but basically what this means is that um, whenever you return zero, that means that it tells your system, tells your computer, that everything ran smoothly and that the you know the program closed with no errors, okay? But if it returns a non-zero number like one, two, three, or four, or five, something like that, right? Well, like one, for example, that means that some error happened, okay? So that means that your system will now know that something bad happened, you know, or something like that, right? But yeah, like I said, if you return zero, that tells your system basically that everything went smoothly and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? So I know a lot of this is gibberish, like you said, but you just have to get used to typing all of this out because this is gonna be the skeleton or the template that we're gonna use to make every single one of our applications in the future, okay? It's going to get more complex in the future, but this is basically what you need to know to get started. So the more you type this, the more you'll begin to um, remember it. So make sure you do, um, you know, practice a lot, you know, type this over and over. So basically every episode I'll be typing this out. So make sure you do the same thing so that you can get it stuck into your brain so you don't ever forget how to do it. So you don't, because you don't want to have to keep going back to my files in the description or, you know, look at my videos every time that you want to um, see how to do this, right? You want to, you know, you want to remember how to do it basically, right? So just make sure you do that. And so one more thing I want to show you is called a comment and it's basically a note that you can leave to yourself as a developer. So I could put slash slash and then behind that I could put any message that I want to put. So I could say this, the main function is a function required by every program, right? 
And so this is a random message that I left for myself. It's not actually going to do anything. It's not going to affect our program at all, right? So if I was to move this down here on the end of this, I could say uh, big booty, right? And if I click run here, it's not going to affect our program in any way, shape, or form because what our compiler does, what C++ does, it ignores uh, it ignores comments, right? Because comments are especially for developers to be able to remember stuff. So let's say you make a really complex program that you know does someone's taxes or something like that, right? At some point in the program, it's going to be so advanced that you want to leave messages for yourself to remind yourself in the future or other developers what the heck this piece of code does, right? Because each piece of code in a program is going to do different things, so sometimes you want to let, you, uh, let your future self know what it means and stuff like that, right? Just an example, but that's what that would do, right? So yeah, I know I went kind of fast, but like I said, you don't really need to know basically what every aspect of this means. I did explain it for you in case you wanted to know. But you do not need to know every aspect of this at this point in time. Just basically what you really need to know is how to do it, how to create this, okay? Because like I said, we're going to be using this within every episode and with every program in the future, okay? But yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, you can ask a comment in the, or leave, ask a question in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Or we have a Discord link in the description too, so you can join our Discord, hang out with us, anything you want to do. Just make sure you do that. I love our Discord. We have 100 people in there so far. And besides that, we have all of the code from today's episode and every future episode is going to be in the description below. So whenever you, you know, you want to save something for future reference, in case you forget something, you can look in the code below and then click the link and it'll take you to the code for this episode. And then you can check it out and bookmark it. So in case you forget something in the future, like I said, you can go back to it. So anyway, make sure you check that out. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.